so here we are i think that we are just uh, in just on time and ju i'm just checking that everything is up and running right now just waiting to to check if the, if youtube is properly sharing the live feed just waiting for the streaming okay so here we are i, I think, think that, that Everything we are is just uh, in just here, on time, so. and ju I'm just checking that everything is up and running Let's right now. Put this just waiting headphone away, and just let me check that it is properly showing. It seems so. Okay. So friends, it seems that we are really ready to start this uh, new edition of Asteroid Day 2017. Gianluca Massi, founder and scientific director of the Virtual Telescope Project, is very happy and pleased to welcome you on this new live event hosted by the Virtual Telescope Project. You know, today is Asteroid Day, and uh, if you missed this, I want to remind you that the 30th of June is now Asteroid Day, and I will tell you a few things about this. I apologize if you see me a bit tired, but you know, I'm in Luxembourg City right now, and earlier today, just for Asteroid Day Live, we hosted a wonderful event, which lasted six, six hours. It was one part of the huge 24 hours long live streaming about asteroids never seen before something like this on this planet about asteroids for the first time we had such a very long live coverage on this topic and from here luxembourg city we really did a lot of things thanks to the organization of the asteroid day global team and it was wonderful i will tell you a few things about this so i apologize if you see me a bit tired but you can easily imagine the pressure and i mean also how tired we are after such a big effort and also want to tell you that the weather in italy is terribly cloudy i have read of really uh, very bad weather conditions all over italy and this is affecting also the observatory so as for tonight i will not be able to show you real-time images but luckily i have some of the images you know uh, the telescope is able to take when the sky is clear of course about asteroids and of course i will do this and uh, uh, during these 45 minutes we will be here together so first of all let me thank you all of you for waiting the mid just this the midnight we are in the middle of the night formally in europe we have just handed the asteroid day but the earth is still rotating so in the us they are still celebrating and earlier of course uh, we had the far east starting the celebrations because they were just uh, under the right uh, with the right time zone so i want to tell you a bit about the asteroid day you know this is a movement which started now a few years ago in 2014 and the, the founders were gregory richters brian may the famous uh, queen guitarist you know and also an astrophysics also the uh, rusty is card the apollo 9 astronaut that is great man and also danny karemi these four people really made something unique. They created an event that in a few years, this is just the death edition, have just conquered the world and it is really making history. This event hosted here at the Virtual Telescope Project is part of the official celebration. I want just to remind that Gianluca Masi, the one talking to you, is the national coordinator for Italy for Asteroid Day. And this event, as I said, is uh, um, officially recognized by the asteroid day team and also want to thank the technological partners of the virtual telescope they are uniton italia instruments software disk c web santa barbara instrument instruments group plane instruments and other planetary and i also want to thank and acknowledge the uh, cooperation uh, with ansa scienza and technica and uh, enrica battifoglia taking care of that uh, scientific department on the most important Italian press agency. So we are celebrating asteroid days. 
I know, you know, uh, I, I, I bet you have read a lot about this these uh, uh, past days, also uh, in Italy, in Europe, all around. And one of the main goals for Asteroid Day is to increase our capability to discover potentially hazardous asteroids, to address the real risk this object pose to the Earth, and also to understand what to do just in case an asteroid will show to have the intention to hit our planet. So basically, it wants to raise the awareness of the global community toward the asteroid topic and uh, underlining what they are, what, what is their meaning, how useful they are to understand who we are, from where we come, because the history of the solar system has left very precious information on the asteroid population. But of course, from time to time, an asteroid hits our planet, and this can be really a big, big, I mean, a big disaster. And asteroids really can really uh, leave a tremendous impact, not only physical, but also metaphorically speaking, on the, li and the life evolution. Asteroid Day is celebrated 30 of June because 30 of June 1908, Tunguska, a place very far away in, in, the, in Siberia, Russia, uh, had a very incredible event, the most uh, powerful event in uh, Britain history, and something exploded in uh, over the sky there in Siberia, Tunguska, really destroying more than 2,000 square kilometers, so really delivering a huge amount of high energy. So we, cho we have chosen this day for Asteroid Day just to celebrate the birthday of that, the most important event in recent history, you know. And there is also big news, I mean, this year. You know, we had an Asteroid Day 2015, 2016, and, nine, and now 2017. But this year, we have a very special, I mean, uh, um, flag over this. Because last December, no less than the uh, General Assembly at the United Nations decided to accept, to acknowledge Asteroid Day as a global celebration to be continued year after year and celebrated, as I said, on 30 of June. So we have now also, uh, I mean, the uh, this additional meaning, this important addition, I mean. So here we are to understand a bit better what asteroids are. Again, I am sorry if from time to time you will see me <laughs> thinking a bit about the English, but trust me when I say that the last 36 hours have been amazingly, amazingly busy and hard, but happy for the results. You know, asteroids simply are around the solar system, you know, and uh, we started discovering asteroids a bit more than two centuries ago. The first asteroid was discovered by an Italian astronomer. It was Giuseppe Piazzi who discovered the first one on the 1st of, Ju of January um, 1801. So the first asteroid was Italian even if now that asteroid is defined a dwarf planet and it's named Ceres, in the, uh, just to honor the Sicily island from where Palermo City, Piazzi, discovered it. But over this huge amount of time, we have been able really to find a lot of uh, these asteroids. And if you don't mind, I want to show you a nice plot. Here it is, this plot. It can look quite strange, you know, but it has a very simple meaning. If you see how many asteroids we have in the solar system versus the distance from the sun, I mean, you just see, you just see how many asteroids you find at every distance from the sun using a special meter. That meter is the distance between sun and earth. It is called the astronomical unit. It is just um, a way to make this this plot, the uh, the reading of this plot, much more simple. You see, what is very apparent here, that you have a huge number of asteroids. I mean, ten of thousands or more asteroids, where you see a lot of black. I mean, between two and three point five astronomical units. Okay. And this is why we call that region the uh, asteroid main belt. But you see also that around uh, 
position one on the horizontal axis, at, I mean at one astronomical unit from, unit from, the, from the sun, you still have some objects you see there. A smaller population, but still some. And it is worth to underline that one astronomical unit is exactly the distance of the Earth from the sun. What does this mean? It means that where we are moving with the Earth, you still have, um, I mean, a smaller number of asteroids, but they are there. So the Earth is moving along its orbit, crossing a region of space in the solar system where asteroids are orbiting too. And they are the asteroids we want to study because they are near Earth asteroids, literally objects moving, orbiting the Sun, close to the Earth orbit. And in principle, what, what, what we can see is that one of these asteroids can cross the orbit of the Earth. And when it crosses the orbit of the Earth, if you also have the Earth there, you know, it is an impact. Anyway, this plot is also interesting because if you look at the main belt region, you see that the distributions of asteroids there is not that uniform. You see that there are very deep and sharp white lines, white, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, regions where you see no asteroids and uh, they are gaps and they are called the Kirkwood gaps because Kirkwood was the first to recognize the existence of those structures. In other words, it looks like that at that given distance, okay, asteroids really do not like to be. And of course, it will be great to investigate while objects are not moving there. And of course, we have learned a lot of things and we know now what it means, what those uh, gaps means. For example, one of them is a 2.4 uh, astronomical units, okay? If you put an object there, it will move around the sun, of course, following its orbit with that semi-major axis, but from the Kepler law, you can easily derivate the orbital period of this hypothetic object placed at 2.4 astronomical units. And you will find that an object moving at that distance with that period will be in a very strange, uh, I mean, uh, a synch synchroni synchronous orbit with Jupiter. So it will take the big effects of uh, Jupiter perturbations and it, it, it will be just pushing and pulling this asteroid there because their periods are somewhat, somewhat in a resonance, you know. This way, the asteroid will be removed from there. And this is one of the most efficient sources delivering asteroids in the inner solar system. In other words, one of the reasons why we have asteroids close to one astronomical unit where the Earth is orbiting the Sun is this is because Jupiter is removing objects from these uh, gaps, delivering them in different regions of the solar system, including the inner solar system. So Jupiter is responsible for an important fraction of these near-Earth objects. In other words, the existence of this near-Earth object population is a natural consequence of the dynamic behavior of our solar system, you know. We also know that uh, asteroids are, I mean, the basic elements, the small little pieces from where planets formed, collision after collision. And basically, we have to thank asteroids because they have built the Earth, how you can build a house with bricks, you know. And uh, we have this leftover between Mars and Jupiter. This is why, uh, I mean, the, um, the asteroid belt at this distance here from two to four more or less and something more distance is something closer to me, but basically the main belt is there. It is between Jupiter and Mars, okay? 
there is this uh, uh, leftover, this uh, huge asteroid population simply because Jupiter made it possible to the objects there to, to meet, to impact each other, creating a new planet. So it is a missing planet. It is a li very little planet, something very small actually, even if you put together all those pieces you get a very small object. But anyway, the reason we have those single small pieces orbiting there is because of Jupiter, which made it impossible to them to find a way to put together, put them together, you know. This is just to explain you why we see this uh, fascinating thing in our solar system. As I say to you, while asteroids are important, at least for this reason, you can learn a lot about our solar system if you simply study them, because they are the most pristine material still surviving around the sun and dating back to the true original times, the origin, the origin of the solar system, you know. So if you study them, you are really studying some kind of fossil object in the solar system, you know. But another reason, of course, is uh, if you concentrate, if you focus on the smaller population of those objects moving in the inner solar system, or at least able to approach the Earth, you open another important topic here. You can handle, you are facing the impact risk for, from one of those objects, friends. So if we concentrate only on these smaller populations, population, sorry, considering only the objects moving close to the Earth, you see that the new population, the near Earth object population, is not so small. We know more than half a million asteroids, okay? And about 15,000 of objects are defined near Earth asteroids. That is, they approach our planet quite enough to be called, to be flagged this way. And among the near Earth asteroids, there is a subclass named potentially hazardous asteroids. If you are basically larger than 100 meters, and if you come closer than 7.5 million of kilometers, you are called potentially hazardous asteroids. But I want to show you something now. We discovered the first near Earth asteroids, asteroid at the end of the 19th century. It was 1998 and the asteroid was Eros. I should uh, I showed Eros in a past live event through the virtual telescope. But in, uh, I mean, more than one century, we really increased our capabilities to discover all these objects. And uh, I want to show you exactly this. I want to show you the new population, or better, how we really learn to discover these near-Earth asteroids. This plot is amazingly of amazingly interest. You can really see that the discovery rate here exploded, really exploded, soon after the beginning of the new millennium. Earlier, you see the number of near-Earth asteroids was pretty modest, you see, because, of course, we didn't have instruments able to um, carefully hunt for them, scanning the skies and reporting every moving object, and in particular, those with the suspicious movement suggesting they were near Earth asteroids, you know. But finally, the community understood that these objects could be really a risk for our planet. And let me say this, we know, for example, that the mass extinction happened about 765 million of years ago at the boundary between Cretaceous and Tertiarium, Tertiarium, sorry, the KT boundary, the so-called KT boundary, was due to an asteroid impact. And uh, 
among the most famous victims of that mass extinction, we know there were the dinosaurs. But let me say this, dinosaurs are only the famous victims. About 75% of the wool species on this planet were blown away by that, by that catastrophic impact. So when we realized this, and this connection dates back to 1980s, more or less, okay? But even a few decades earlier, some people in particular, I want to remember the great work of Eugene Shoemaker, started, un started understanding that asteroids could really be a serious problem for the Earth. And this also um, required some special study of the Moon, learning that the Moon craters were simply the signature, the leftover of the, of the collisions of an asteroid with our satellite. So if our little sister out there had so many impacts, why the Earth should have, should have had a less, I mean, <laughs> ter terrible past? So collisions are just happening. They are part of the dynamic of the solar system, okay? Even if in the past they were more frequent, you know, more material orbiting around the sun, but they are still possible, you know. So we decided to start some projects, some uh, special telescopes doing this job, scanning the sky exclusively to look for near-Earth asteroids. And uh, when these surveys, this is how we call them, started, we rapidly increased learning about this important population. And you can see right now, this plot is, uh, has been updated uh, a few days ago. We know more than 15,000 objects. And among them, you see there are about 8,000 larger than one, 140 meters. But we have more than 1,000. 1,000 object larger than one kilometer. And one kilometer is the threshold saying that an asteroid of that size colliding with the Earth can likely uh, provide an extinction mass event. So they are of particular importance, you know. But they are also bigger, so easy, easier to be discovered and likely and in fact, these very, these very days, it is not frequent to discover asteroids that size that is one kilometer. We continue discovering a lot of small objects because we continue to develop better and better telescopes to the point that we are able to spy, to find very small objects. And um, to the point that people has, have the impression that over the last couple of years, there is such a big traffic of asteroids all around, but please consider that it is just an impression. Simply, we are now able, we have a much more efficiency locating, discovering, observing the smallest asteroids. They have been there all the time, but we are able to see them just now. And this is why we really need to increase our capabilities to detect them. And this is one of the reasons this one on the reason why Asteroid Day is. And I also want to mention that uh, in Italy, Asteroid Day Italy uh, is, uh, is still running and a lot of was done today and it was a big, big success. I know of successes all over the planet. Anyway, so here it is, the nearer asteroid uh, discoveries over the time. So we are pretty good at discovering asteroids, but there is still a lot to be done. I want to show you also another great thing I received from my very dear friend and colleague Michael Swartz, and I'm very happy to show you this picture because this is something unique. Michael Swartz is the founder and director of Tenagra Observatories. We started a very important cooperation with Tenagra Observatories. You know, and this will make history, I'm sure, on as for science, communication, and astronomical research. Anyway, right now, Michael is in uh, Wyoming, U.S., and is looking for fossil things from the KT boundary. And 
he's just putting his finger at the boundary between Cretaceous and Tertiarium, you see. And this is a clear evidence. This is this image is of particular as a particular meaning, and I'm very grateful that Michael shared it with us because looking and showing this image on the asteroid day is just giving us the geological proof that an asteroid just uh, hit the Earth that far day about 65 million years ago. And that is, of course, a clear geological evidence. So thank you, Michael, for sharing this with us. So there are several telescopes looking all around the sky just to discover this potentially hazardous object. And by the way, during our live feed from Luxembourg today, we connected with the Catalina Sky Survey and Pan Star Survey. They are among the best highs, technological highs we have to just uh, survey the sky looking for this dangerous object, you know. But also there are many telescopes all around the planet just uh, taking care of the asteroid we discover because the asteroid you discover today needs to be followed up for a while. Only in this way you will have enough data providing a reliable orbit to you, making possible for you to track and predict where the asteroid would be. Without this information, we will be we will be unable to predict where the asteroid will be, and we cannot evaluate the impact risk, you know. In other words, discovering an asteroid without follow-up would be basically nothing. It is really not a discovery at all. If you discover something today to lose it tomorrow, it basically it is not a discovery. And uh, this is why I still want to mention Michael Swartz and his Tanagra observatories, because they are doing a precious, unique work funded by NASA. They are taking care to do follow-up of critical near-Earth asteroids, and they are also going to find them when they approach us they approach us for the second time. I want to show you just a few images of these asteroids just to show you how a near-Earth object looks like. And uh, I want to show you one of the most famous of these asteroids. It is the asteroid, asteroid Hycarus. Let me see if it works or not. Here it is. This is an animation, at least it should be. No? Oh, this is a. Okay. I was sure it was an animation, but I don't. Anyway, the object you see, the dot of light you see in the very center there, is uh, the asteroid Hycarus we imaged some time ago when it approached the Earth. Of course, it was a truly safe, close approach. The object was bright because it is. Uh, not small and the virtual telescope was able to share it live real time with people worldwide so we are very happy every time an asteroid is safely approaching us because for us is a huge opportunity just to share these things with curious people out there not being not doing this as their job so for us is a privilege to share our knowledge uh, and uh, i mean the real-time observation of this object with you and this is why we love this kind of uh, shared observing you know also another interesting object let me see if i can find it okay it should be this one let me see if i can show you sorry i want to be sure that this will show possibly Okay. Oh, this is working now, you see. This is a very famous asteroid. 2012 DH14, now named it Duende. It was 15 February 2013 when we were shocked by the Chelyabinsk asteroid event. A small asteroid, 20 meters large, exploded in the high atmosphere over the big city of Chelyabinsk in Russia, destroying a lot, thousands of thousands of windows and other things 
with the, a lot of people injured, luckily no fatal, no casualties there. And the evening, this happened, of course, without uh, notice, when we were uh, waiting for this asteroid approaching us later the same day. Of course, we know there was no connection between the two objects. It is just a coincidence. And here it is exactly this asteroid while it was approaching and uh, this very precious sequence has been made by the virtual telescope project and it is really showing its stunning capabilities tracking these very fast close approaches. I must say that the software beast made something incredible to create their hardware able to track these extreme objects. The virtual telescope project is one of the very few telescopes on this planet able to track any asteroid at any apparent motion rate in the sky and uh, I remember that night very very well. Let me see if I can show you again Icarus just to see if I was able to fix this uh, problem. Let me try again. Okay so the animation showing Icarus you see there is a cloud that these are many images at time lapse and uh, at some point you see a strange pattern in the image is simply a, a cloud which entered the field of view of the telescope i love this kind of sequence the asteroid is uh, flying while approaching us or leaving us and uh, the telescope is able to track it perfectly and the stars in the background looks like trails you see another nice animation let me see if I can show you this to you now. It is asteroid 2015 TB145. Let me see. Okay, look, another truly interesting object. That night, there was a very strong moon and the asteroid, while moving, was apparently moving to the same place where the moon was. This is why over the time, image after image during this animation, you see an increasing brightness because the asteroid was just moving in the same part of the sky where the moon was shining of course it is just a perspective i'm not saying that the asteroid was going to hit the moon it was simply moving in the same part of the sky where the moon was sitting that night one of the most extreme asteroid was this one a few years ago This is 2011 MD. I remember when I did these images. As for us, it was really uh, an incredible experience. This one has been perhaps the closest asteroid to Earth ever. I observed, if I remember right, its minimum distance from us was from the Earth's surface was about uh, 11,000 kilometers. So basically, it was above the Earth's surface of a, an amount and, and a distance, an amount, uh, the very same amount as the Earth diameter. So just to give you an idea how close this object went, arrived, you know. But now I want to show you another interesting thing with you, a truly unique document. I will try to, to show you, then I will comment. You see an asteroid traveling as usual at this point. Then no asteroid at all. What happened? We are worrying. But at some point the asteroid is back. This truly unique sequence captured late last year by the virtual telescope is showing the close approaching asteroid 2016 VH in eclipse while it approached us at some point it jumped into the earth shadow like the moon during the lunar eclipses you know and uh, at that point the sun was no longer just uh, uh, lightning sending light to it it was not under the, the light the, the sun light you know an eclipse i say and this is why you lose it 
and it is good to know that of course the asteroid just get fainter and fainter disappearing and then it is gradually back just because of course it is i mean a gradual ingress and egress and uh, i mean the asteroid is going inside and leaving the earth shadow gradually you know and this is a truly incredible sequence and all the images i share with you so far were taken with these telescopes in particular the one you see on the left but the telescopes are able to track basically every every asteroid my friend i'm sorry that we could not see these objects live because as i say the sky is really cloudy the weather is not good all over italy including the central italy where the observatory is but of course discovering these potentially hazardous objects is just one part of the story we are now studying where there are many ideas and many projects to understand what to do if an asteroid will really be in route or collision with us there are possible space missions to just move remove the asteroid from the original orbit putting it on a safer uh, safer um, route of course of course it is, is not easy and in particular this, this can be done if you have 10 20 years of anticipation you have to, to to do this well in advance because you have to move just a mount traveling with a relative speed versus the earth even 20 25 15 kilometers per second you know and it is not it's not obvious you know and also we have to learn how to handle the risk of collision on the ground if really something is going to hit us and you really don't have any chance to uh, i mean mitigate this risk you have to manage this so man disaster managers and emergency manager are very important professional figures here and asteroid day is increasing awareness on all these complex complex but very fascinating topic and i really also i also believe that from here new professional figures the young people out there just thinking about the future can really find a great inspiration with this kind of topic and uh, i will put online also the entire 24 hours long live feed we did today as asteroid day it is still running now uh, in the hands of our american colleagues we did six hours from luxembourg here and uh, i'm sorry for the weather we could not go live i'm sorry if uh, i was uh, uh, less smarter than usual but as i say to you it has been an incredibly incredibly hard but incredibly successful and incredibly happy day i want to thank all of you for joining again the virtual telescope technological partners unito italia instruments software beats c web Bader planetarium santa barbara instrument group and plane web instruments i also want to thank asteroid day for this amazing movement asteroid day global in particular Dwight richter my good Dwight richter my good friend and one of the four founders of the asteroid day and they really did something good and i want to thank you because you are the soul of the virtual telescope project after all if we are here is is because you are there ready to just to follow us to learn with us because everyone here is learning so hope that for you this was an enjoyable experience despite the late time for europe americans at this time are more comfortably comfortably sitting in front of their computer and i see anyway thank you for being here i wish you happy asteroid day you look amazing virtual telescope luxembourg city asteroid day live goodbye and keep looking up keep looking at the asteroids